All right. Uh, good afternoon and happy noon to all of you. Um, in a statement that we issued, you saw the Secretary General said he is following closely the developments in Nigeria and calls for an end to reported police brutality and abuses. He condemns the violent escalation of the October 20th on October 20th in Lagos, which resulted in multiple deaths and caused many injuries. The Secretary General expresses his condolences to the bereaved families and wishes a speedy recovery to those injured. He calls on Nigerian authorities to investigate these incidents and hold the perpetrators accountable. The Secretary General also urges the security forces to act at all times with maximum restraint while calling on protesters to demonstrate peacefully and to refrain from violence. The Secretary General encourages the authorities to swiftly explore avenues to de-escalate the situation and reiterates the readiness of the United Nations to support national efforts towards finding a solution. And uh, as you have seen, the Secretary General today launched a new global campaign calling on people to pledge to pause before they share content about COVID-19 pandemic online. In a video message, the Secretary General said that during the COVID-19 pandemic, the wrong information can be deadly. He called on people to take the pledge to pause and help stop the spread of misinformation. Our hope is that this message will be replicated by other leaders, influencers, and concerned citizens. This new campaign is part of Verified, which, as you know, is a UN initiative launched in May to communicate accessible, science-based backed health information in compelling formats and share stories of global solidarity around the fight against the virus. Uh, the press release and other information has been shared with you. Um, the, this morning, the Secretary General spoke at the annual ministerial meeting between the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, otherwise known as ASEAN, and the United Nations. He said, at this time of global challenge and uncertainty, regional partners remain indispensable allies, stressing that the need to work together to protect lives and jobs and to keep businesses and economies afloat. The Secretary General thanked ASEAN for its support of his appeal for a global ceasefire and said he looked forward to its adv advocacy to help end hostilities around the world, including in ongoing conflicts in its region. He also noted that today the second five-year ASEAN UN Plan of Action was adopted, which has many new and expanded priority areas for our future cooperation, including youth, peace and security agenda, cybersecurity, and action to prevent hate speech. The Deputy Secretary General, Mina Mohammed, this morning delivered remarks at an event on investing in COVID-19 vaccines and primary health care delivery systems. Amina Mohammed said the pandemic is undermining our efforts to achieve the sustainable development goals and secure universal health coverage. She underscored that the pandemic will need a global response to address both the health and economic impact, adding that the path out of its uh, excuse me, the path out of it is built on strong health systems underpinned by robust primary health care, without which we cannot deliver a vaccine effectively. Her remarks have been shared with you. Staying on the topic of COVID, I just have an update from uh, our colleagues in Sierra Leone, uh, where the UN where schools uh, reopened this month after uh, being closed for six months. Uh, the UN team, uh, led on the ground by the resident coordinator, Babatunde Ahonsi, is supporting the National School Feeding Program, targeting 330,000 children in 11 districts. Since March, the UN has been supporting the national response, focusing on providing life-saving supplies, including food for the most vulnerable people. We've also transported medical teams. The UN has also been working with farmers to double their productivity and incomes. Our communications experts have been uh, working side by side with the government on a communication strategy, looking at how women and men are impacted differently by the pandemic. Gender experts are also deployed to five districts to ensure that gender concerns are a crucial component to the response. The UN team continues to support authorities in ensuring that gender dimensions are also in data to help them tailor comprehensive response that saves lives and livelihoods and leaves no one behind. This morning uh, here, at least virtually, the Security Council held a meeting on the situation in Kosovo. Briefing the Council was the Secretary General Special Representative for Kosovo and head of the UN mission, Zahir Tanin. He noted that the UN's 75-year history, the need for global solidarity and international cooperation has never been clearly as demonstrated as it is today. 
He stressed that for places such as Kosovo, cooperation, unity of political voice and vision, dialogue and preventing extremist, extreme polarization should be the highest order priorities. Mr. Tanin said during the past seven months, Kosovo has persevered through multiple overlapping challenges triggered by the ongoing worldwide pandemic. Severe socioeconomic consequences of the virus have created a negative impact on the economy, particularly impacting youth, women, and other vulnerable communities. Mr. Tannen said the UN mission, alongside the UN Kosovo team of UN agencies, funds, and programs, has significantly adapted their activities to help meet the unprecedented, unprecedented challenges brought by the virus. Following Council meeting, there will be a virtual stakeout by the EU4, uh, which are the European Union members in the Security Council, namely Belgium, Estonia, France, and Germany, along, and they will be joined by the United Kingdom and incoming members, Ireland and Norway. Um, our colleagues in the UN mission in Western Sahara report that uh, as of this morning, it observed some 50 people, including men, women, and children, present in the buffer strip at Gergerat. They were blocking the traffic that passes through the area. The mission deployed additional staff this morning to, to the area to help diffuse any tension and unblock the traffic. We urge all concerns to exercise restraint and to make all necessary steps to diffuse any tensions. We recall that regular civilian commercial traffic should not be obstructed and that no action should be taken which may constitute a change to the status quo of the buffer strip. The mission will continue to monitor the situation closely. From Geneva, our friend, the acting special representative for Libya, Stephanie Williams, uh, briefed your colleagues following the first two days of face-to-face -face direct talks between the two Libyan uh, delegations to the 5 plus 5 Joint Military Commission. She reported the two sides have reached an agreement on several important issues which directly impact the lives and welfare of the Libyan people. This includes agreeing to the opening of the land routes that connect all of the regions and the cities of Libya, as well as the opening of air routes throughout Libya. Uh, the acting representative also said the two sides We'll take, today we'll take up the issue of arrangements for Libya's central region, paving the way for a ceasefire agreement. Uh, the talks are expected to continue through Saturday, and her remarks, I think, have been shared. Our humanitarian colleagues tell us that hostilities in northwest Syria continue almost daily, despite the March 5th ceasefire agreement. While across the country, civilian casualties continue to be reported. Despite the reduced airstrikes in the northwest following the ceasefire, there are increased number of reported incidents involving improvised explosive devices, clashes between non-state armed groups, and targeted attacks across Idlib and northern Aleppo. Humanitarian, con humanitarians continue to be injured and killed by hostilities, including two humanitarian workers and their driver who were injured during an airstrike in Idlib on the 15th of this month. In total, across the country in August and September, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights verified at least 117 incidents in which 108 civilians were killed and 172 civilians were wounded as a result of conduct of hostilities. We once again reaffirm the Secretary General's call for a full countrywide ceasefire and call on all parties to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law and international human rights law to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure. And turning to Southeast Asia, uh, where heavy rains have caused severe and widespread flooding and landslides in Vietnam, Cambodia, and part of the Lao People's Democratic Republic in Thailand since the beginning of the month. Um, across the region, more than 100 people have reportedly died and 110,000 reportedly been displaced. Uh, in Vietnam, we, along with the government and NGOs, are carrying out assessments in affected areas. We, along with our partners, are supporting the government's response by providing food and other items. Nearly 900,000 people have been impacted by these uh, floods and landslides in Vietnam alone. The UN resident coordinator met with the Vietnamese prime minister today to offer support in areas where the needs are the greatest. And in Cambodia, we're also working with the government to assess needs and damage. And just to flag that there's a report today released by the UN Environment Program that warns that rising inequality, biodiversity loss, and the growing impact of climate change and unrelenting pressure on natural resources could lead to irreversible environmental damage in the Mediterranean basin. And that's in the report called The State of the Environment and Development in the Mediterranean. And that is available online. 
we have, we're ending with some good uh, money news. Uh, thanks go to our friends in Belarus and Chile, as both member states have paid their regular budget dues in full for 2020. Um, in addition to the virtual stakeout, at 1.30 p.m., there will be a briefing here by, uh, excuse me, not here, by virtual briefing by Olivier de Schutter, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights. He will brief you on the same platform uh, that we use here. So uh, reconnect when needed. Um, James and then Madame. Um, I've got lots of questions I want to ask, but let me just start with a follow-up to something that you read and one new one. So the follow-up to what you read, st very strong statement on Nigeria. Yeah. Um, in addition to issuing words, is the Secretary General planning to pick up the phone? Is he going to be calling President Buhari? Are there going to be other contacts between the UN and high-level Nigerian uh, officials? He spoke to the Nigerian president uh, a, few, a few days ago. And then there will be contacts on the ground as well. And can I ask you about your statement on Nigeria? Because, as I just said, it is a very strong statement. Mm -hmm. And when you contrast that with statements you've issued recently on Belarus, where pretty much the same thing has been going on, when you contrast it with statements that you made in recent months about police violence against Black Lives Matter protesters in the U.S., where you a lot of the time seem to dance around the subject, um, it seems to be very different rules for some countries and others. I think all of the statements we've issued have been based on the same basic principles, which is people have a right to demonstrate peacefully. Security forces have a responsibility to show restraint, and demonstrators need to do this, uh, need to do this uh, peacefully. And I think, you know, you could argue that different words have been used, but the, the basic principle applies across the board. My new subject is uh, the new statement from the Pope, um, in which he's come out in a documentary saying he supports same-sex civil union. Um, what's the UN's reaction? I think it's a very positive... I mean, I, I've, let me just say, I've just seen the, the, the press reports. I haven't seen the documentary. But obviously, if, if, if it's quoted accurately, it would be uh, a, a, very positive, uh, a very positive move. Uh, I think the Secretary General has spoken out very forcefully against, uh, against homophobia in favor of LGBTQ uh, rights, that people should never be persecuted or discriminated against uh, just for who they love. And can we get the Secretary General's personal reaction as one of the most prominent Catholics in the world? Yeah. Uh, Is that a no? Or? No, no, no. That's. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've give, I'm, I speak on his behalf. I mean, I, if, if I can get you more, I will get you more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, Madame uh, Dabor. Stefan, uh, I did not see any statement from the SJ on the murder of the teacher in France. Did he talk to uh, Macron? Neither did I see a statement from UNESCO which I believe deals with education. Why? Uh, I, I can't speak for UNESCO. Uh, the Secretary General was absolutely shocked and horrified. Uh, 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 je finis ma phrase. Sorry, the Secretary General was absolutely shocked and, and horrified uh, when he saw the news. Uh, he spoke uh, to the French permanent representative, Nicolas de Rivière, right after I, I shared the news with him uh, to express his, his shock, his condemnation uh, of, this, uh, of, of, this heinous, uh, of this heinous act. Hi. Hi. Um, I didn't want to preempt Celia. That'll no, just I, I know, nobody trouble. wants to preempt Celia. Um, just in terms... <laughs> Just in terms of the re a readout from that conversation with President Buhari, what did yeah. the SG say to him? No, I don't have a readout, but I can tell you that the, the Secretary General's uh, message, uh, both privately and publicly, uh, are based on the same on the same principles I've elaborated. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, anybody up on screen? Yes, Abdel Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Stephanie William uh, today sounded very optimistic, uh, and I think she has many reasons to do so. But I, ha I want to raise a question about uh, the mercenaries in Libya. She said they would have to be evacuated or evicted from Libya in 90 days. We understand there are some uh, mercenaries who belong to some countries, like maybe Turkey, like uh, Sudan, like Chad, who can uh, 
to operate with their governments and take them back. But what about the Wagner uh, mercenaries? The, uh, according to the Russian Federation, they have nothing to do with it. Who will take it, the Wagner's and who would force them to be out? Look, I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, get into the details of the discussions that are going on in Geneva because I'm not privy to them. Uh, from, from, you know, and Stephanie Williams is clearly in the lead. From here, I mean, our basic message is that uh, there should be no foreign fighters uh, in, in Libya, no matter under what cover they may, uh, they may be there. And that's why it's so important to have these military talks and these military officials agree on a way forward. Uh, Mr. Bayes. So um, picking up on another statement that you've issued on Haiti, um, you, uh, again, the statement about uh, how, how bad things have been with co cholera, mm -hmm. uh, but no ad admission, of course, again, of any liability by the UN. Uh, but you do talk about the fund that the UN set up and mm -hmm. that member states need to come forward, provide more money. What is the state of that fund? How much, uh, remind us how much you sure. want and uh, how much has since been... Since the initial outbreak of, uh, of cholera in October 2010, the international community has spent over $705 million to fight cholera in support of the government's national plan. This includes more than $139 million mobilized by UN agencies. On the new approach, uh, more than $80 million has been mobilized by the UN and the agency since the announcement of the new approach in August of 2016. So what's the... Uh, How much do you want to raise? You've got 80 million, and you say it's from the agency. Uh, I need to get you a I mean, more. I'm trying to work out no, no, how much no, I under, I the states have given. Yeah. Because uh, you're asking member states to Right, right. no, I'm saying 80 million has been... Uh, from member states. From member states. But I will get you with... Uh, the target is more, yeah. but I will get you a, a more definite It'd be useful ceiling. to know what percentage yeah. has been fulfilled. I understand. Um, and uh, then, um, quickly, um, following up on Libya... Is there any news on the special envoy, the new special envoy? No, we would like to, uh, obviously, we'd like to, we're moving on this as fast as we can. We would like to appoint, uh, I think the aim, uh, hopefully, will be reached, is to appoint both positions at the same time. And the last one, a follow up from yesterday, um, I'm going to say it again. Um, watching the video conference of Kosovo. The sound quality is poor. There's sound bleed on it. The picture we're, quality is nowhere near, near as good as it was. The new platform you are using for the Security Council, and it's not their issue, it's the, it's the, it's the Secretariat that provide the video platform, is really not no, good I know. enough. We're having, uh, listen, I, I spoke to our colleagues again about this morning. We're having a lot of issues with this, uh, this new platform that we're using, which allows for the simultaneous interpretation. And, and they're they're working on it. I, that's the only thing I can tell you. Um, okay. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Iftikhar, please. Uh, go ahead, Iftikhar. Uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday in authorities in Indian occupied Kashmir sealed the offices of Kashmir Times a leading newspaper and one of the oldest in the disputed state. This obviously is part of the crackdown that began in August uh, last year. And the editor of the paper, Ms. Basin, has tweeted that this is a uh, vendetta uh, uh, for speaking out. Uh, any comments from the Secretary uh, General? I, I had not seen those reports. Let me look into it, and I will get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Varma, the... The floor is not yours, but the podium and the screens are. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. 